It is those days where the unsung progress uh, really comes to bite you. And what I mean by that is I was up around 6 a.m., a little bit earlier, and it is now 8.20 p.m., and I've been working exactly since I woke up with the only break to probably just work out for an hour. And I didn't get I, – I made a lot of subtle progress, but no results are shown. And those, for me, are the toughest days because I am – results focused not uh, progress driven and it it is something that i guess i can only reflect on if i talk about it every day like i am currently doing right this second because uh previously one of my main goals and i think one of the biggest key factors to really take the business that i'm working with right now to the next wet level is crushing a referral program. But I am not too tech savvy. And when you do something for the first time, it is very difficult. So from about 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., a four-hour period, I was trying to learn. I was downloading different software. I was trying to learn how to actually implement and, and integrate the software, which allows the referral program, with the website that we use to run the online business. And uh, it's not set up yet, but that took a lot of time and I'm left with a lot more questions than answers. And I'm so wildly frustrated with myself that I didn't get that done today. But I also feel like I don't even know what I don't know about the subject yet, because there's so many different integrations that need to be done with different kind of codes and lines of work that I don't understand. And when you don't understand, or when I don't understand something, my first reaction is to just go to what I know best, and that is doing nothing and watching useless YouTube videos and just uh, telling its work because I'm studying. And I think I can speak for personal experience. I do this way too often. You watch a few motivational YouTube videos or just business YouTube videos, and you think that you're actually learning. but you are just learning secondhand thoughts that somebody else crafted from actually having the experience. And if you don't do the actual work, you can recite the exact same thing. I was saying this, oh, all you have to do is you just, if you have a referral program, it could really increase sales. If you do this and this and this and this and this, and I'm just quoting other people who have had the results for them. And when I say it, it can sound really smart, but guess what? I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to in integrate it. I don't know how to implement all the steps that go to the end result. And it is very easy to talk about the end result of those 60 second clips that you hear on Instagram or TikTok. But knowing every minute detail that goes into those steps is a much different situation. And uh, we all figure that out the hard time eventually when we are actually trying to do this stuff for ourselves. And I was getting punched in the face today by a damn referral program. Why is it so difficult? For example, uh, I'm not proficient in JavaScript or coding or um, doing a bunch of different backend tech work that needs to be done to have a proper integration system to where if somebody does refer a friend, you can see who refers them, what their code is, what referral they use, what that product was, how to pay both people out the acceptable amount of discount or whatever it is that you're promising them. And that is a multi, multi, multi-step process that involves a lot of integration. And I'm, I'm making it sound very complex right now, but it really wouldn't be. I think most people here could figure this out pretty quickly if they had the software I'm using shoot, it is called Referral Candy, and the online product store is Squarespace. And, and to be fair, the referral program that I have is actually very well done in, in instructions. The problem is not the instructions, it's the dummy in between these two walls. And uh, it frustrates me a lot when I have an issue that I know there's an easy solution to, and I could easily 
easily hire someone to do this for me and it will be done. The problem is I need to know how to do this. And because I think I'm going to do this for a lot of different businesses or any business that I take a venture with, this is going to be the first things that I do. So I have to learn every single step because I mean, I'm too fucking young to be acting like a CEO of a multi-billion dollar company by just hiring someone to figure everything else out. I want to learn the skill because I think it will be useful in the future. So I just need to suck it up. And if I worked four hours on it today and saw very minute results, the progress that I have is more questions and a little answers. I guess what I'll have to do is another five or six hours tomorrow. And this has to be done within 10 days. It is an absolute necessity. It has to be working on all eight cylinders or a lot of things I do don't work on eight cylinders to begin with. So maybe six cylinders would be fine, but it has to be up and running by in 10 days. And I know that if I spend six hours on this every single day for the next 10 days, because that's what I will absolutely do if I have to, if I spend 60 hours on this, I will be done. So that is at least refreshing because I'm not stupid enough to not figure a simple task out in 60 hours. Whew, so I guess that that will allow me to breathe. And I should think if I spend 12, 13 hours working every day for the next thousand days, which the goal with uh, this documentation is that I will still be doing this in 1000 days. The nature of my work might shift, but I would assume that the amount of skills I can pick up just because of the raw quantity of hours I will be working on crafting new skills with all regarding uh, one end goal will be a drastic increase in my ability to learn and pick up new skills in the future. Because if, if you play a sport, maybe when you're younger, you play football and you're okay, you're semi-athletic and you do pretty good. But then you start playing baseball. And then when football season comes around again, you are significantly better at football and you don't know why. Maybe you're just more athletic now, you're getting a little bit bigger, but it is because you learn additional skills when you play that sport. Then let's say you pick up basketball in the fall and winter. So now you're playing, I mean, in the winter. So now you're playing three sports and now you're progressively getting better at every single sport. And the reason is because you are developing multiple skills that can be used in all skill sets. For me, I, after high school, I took on tennis pretty heavily and I was not that good. Me and my buddy would play every single day. And then I started taking MMA and I was doing boxing, uh, jiu-jitsu, jeet kune do, and specifically jeet kune do. It was Bruce Lee's original martial art. Whew, I'm running out of breath here. <laughs> but it is a lot like chess in a way where it, it is a fluid motion, but it is a constant offense and defense. And it is a very interesting martial art because it is your reaction time and your unpredictability is a huge factor and the guy that I was learning from, he was known for being one of the most unpredictable fighters. Uh, I, in boxing, I can tell you from personal experience, and Jeet Kune Do and, and Muay Thai and pretty much everything, he was very unpredictable. So then what? I started playing tennis again with my buddy and I started smoking him. <laughs> and I was thinking, holy smokes, what the hell is going on? And I realized that I was taking the same lessons of the MMA and uh, Jeet Kune Do that I was learning and implementing it into my tennis game. And you would think those skill sets do not correlate at all. You're right. At surface level, they don't. But deep down, they do because I was doing much more unpredictable things. And I was uh, using my brain a lot more that I because I could correlate it to other stuff. And the moral of this story is it's the same thing with business. And when you are learning a bunch of new skills, it is not a linear growth. Everything compounds very quickly because I bet in six months, if I continue to work 10, 15 hour days for the next six months, when I have a new idea and a new problem that arises, it is going to be a much bigger problem, but I will also 
have a lot more knowledge that acts as a foundation that will allow me to figure out that problem much more quickly. And that's really what you were doing when you were running a business. It is how many problems and how big of a problem can you solve for somebody else? And if you can solve the biggest problem in the world, then you are going to be paid the absolute most amount of money. So how do you get there? Well, you have to have a f incredibly solid foundation because there is nonstop problems that arise. So every single time one of those problems arise, how quickly can you get that resolved? How many problems can you foresee that could occur? And how many problems can you solve for other people? And that really just comes down to how much time and how much can you retain and work and base your business off of? And I don't know if the nature of my business changes because of something that I learned, but I don't think it will change completely. I think it would more so evolve because that's what it's been doing. At first, my business started very basic level. Anyone could do it. it literally, anyone could do it. Uh, and now it's a much more high skilled um, job, but it's still not complete expert. I have incredible demand for my services because I have a proven track record and what I do does work for other people. But I know that there are levels to this and I am on level two because level one was very easy. I think that's what it takes to do $10,000 a month because that's what I was doing. It is incredibly basic. Anyone can do the service, but they would rather pay me to do it than somebody else or do it themselves. And that's how I was making $10,000 a month. Now, uh, I guess we'll see in 10 days how much I make this month, but it will probably be around 20 ish thousand dollars, maybe probably a little bit more. And the reason for that is because I learned a new problem that I could solve. So then what is going to take me to the next level? It is either going to be doing more of this um, for other people and solving this same problem that I'm solving, but for more and more people, which I think I could do if I find the right people to do it for. And that could probably take me to 40, 50, $60,000 a month. Or what I could do is just cultivate my skill set to where the next person that I plan on working with, I don't do $15,000 a month with that single person. I do $75,000 a month with that person, but that takes a whole new skill set. And I understand what that skill set is. And right now I'm working towards learning every single part of that function so I can get to that skill set. It's, 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 eerily similar to any sort of level up video game where you have to acquire new skills or whatever it is that you are acquiring. You have to acquire those. And then once you acquire those, you can level up and fight the dragon. And that dragon for me is just a different number at the end of the month for the, for the pay stamp. So it's very interesting and not as fun as a video game, but on a long time horizon, it, it actually is because it's rewarding in so many more ways than you could imagine. The people that you meet in this is remarkable. Uh, and working out your body is incredibly important. But what I think most people don't do is work out their mind. And that's something I'm trying to do much more. The actual sole goal of this is it is a mental stimulation exercise. It is talking about my plans because there is a huge difference when you talk about doing something that you actually did during the day and being forced to reconcile everything that you did and then formulating ideas to why that's important. That is me actually cultivating personal experience and then expressing it back out instead of just consuming those one minute snippets of hearing you talk about those informations, but you don't have the foundation to work off of. Whew, fuck. I need to breathe in between my sentences. Whew, all right, guys, I have a lot more I could say, but I'm not going to because no one watches these anyway. So goodbye.